we so far whatever we covered in terms of this uh, data reduction principles sufficiency principles if you have any questions you can ask now again so what we will do is now is uh, we will look into the another aspect that is the likelihood principle today and uh, try to cover like some of the concept like likelihood function likelihood estimators and we will also look into other estimators called moment of methods and uh, Bayesian methods. So we wanted to see what's the likelihood function. Suppose let's say a sample x has been observed and now I want to see that I now know that x has been observed how it influences my theta. So to do that I am going to define a function L theta given x which we are going to call it as likelihood function and it is defined simply as f of x given theta that is probability density function of that point x under my parameter theta when that is continuous and I am simply take it as a probability mass function when that is discrete. So we said that suppose let us say we have two parameters theta 1 theta 2 and my true value could be either of this theta 1 and theta 2 I do not know that and I want to identify if theta 1 equals to theta 1 or theta equals to theta 2 I want to ask this how I can potentially decide this one potential way to do is compute its likelihood of observing theta 1 under your function x and similarly compute likelihood observing theta 2 under this under your sample x and see which parameter is more likely and uh, this happens to be more likely than this then we are going to say that uh, parameter theta 1 better explains my samples x so I can say my true parameter is possibly theta 1 and if the other case then may I may go with saying that maybe the true parameter is theta 2 ok. So in this case we are going to say theta 1 is more plausible value of the true parameter than theta 2 and uh, we saw some examples also which we will repeat again. Suppose let us say you have a binomial distribution with parameter n and p and assume that this n is known and uh, this part is unknown the parameter p is unknown and now for time being assume you are given one sample from this you have just observed one sample and using this one sample you need to decide or, uh, or get some information about this parameter p. So how to connect this observed value with my parameter p? I am going to connect through my likelihood function which is defined as n choose x p to the power x 1 minus p n minus x and whatever x is the observed value here. This is one way of defined. I am just giving example of what could be the potential likelihood function one can use. Okay, now instead let us say I mean here I have just taken one example, one sample but it could be a vector also here, it could be you have observed like this. In this case you can rewrite this likelihood that under this sample p, in this case you are simply going to take product of those n, n choose xi then p to the power xi and 1 minus p to the power n minus xi assuming that this sample all of them are independent ok. So now similarly suppose if you are given a random sample where xi are exponential with parameter lambda. Now one way to write the likelihood function of this is yeah using my pdf function which I have simply written here. 
So, this is what the probability of observing x under the parameter lambda and you know this is the PDF at point xi. So, I have just taken and multiply all of them. Now, similarly, if you have a Gaussian where I have unknown value mi and known value sigma square, then also I can simply go and write a likelihood function in terms of my PDF function using this expression. So, here sigma square is known and this mu is unknown and now this is a function of mu given my x i's. So, notice that uh, you should not get disturbed uh, confused here the interpretation of L theta given x and F x given theta. So, here this one when we wrote this we said probability density of a x under the parameter theta in this case theta was given and we try to find PDF of x whereas in this case my x is given and now I am trying to see this as a function in theta x is fixed here. But now for a given theta x I am just taking this to be f of x given theta ok and if my theta changes here so my theta changes here also accordingly ok now the likelihood principle what is that likelihood principle we are talking about we are saying that if I have two samples x and y such that one can be expressed the likelihood of parameter theta under these two samples can be expressed in this form for all theta then we are basically going to say that the conclusion drawn from x and y about the point theta is the same provided this quantity c of x y does not depend on my parameter theta. So, in a moment it will become clear to you why that this uh, transformation are going to be identical when I am looking to obtain information about theta right and uh, once this guy is not dependent on theta actually all the information about the theta is only coming through this and if they are uh, transformed to this function which does not depend on theta in a sense it is telling us ok they are kind of uh, identical the information provided by x and y are identical ok. So, so let us write an example for this suppose I have this random sample where again for simplicity we will take only mu is unknown but sigma square is known. So, this is the likelihood function under observation x for the parameter mu and this is my likelihood function for parameter mu under my observation y and I have just written one function c x comma y here which does not depend on mu but depends on only the known parameter sigma square. So, as far as parameterization concerned this c x y does not depend on my parameter theta. So, theta is mu here. Now, if these two things you want to compare these two are going to be identical if all this samples are going to be identical ok. But now if you take this L you can write this L mu, mu x y here into the product of L x L mu given y and C x y you can write it. So, ok now let us simply consider L mu sorry L mu given y and C x y if I take this product what is going to happen? 
this entire thing get knocked off with this guy and I'm only going to get exactly L mu x right nothing changes so this factor is still there and uh, this guy is there yeah that is fine now as we said now I am able to write L mu x in as a product of these two things and L mu given x and L mu y are going to be same for me in this case they are going to be same through this if this x bar is going to be equals to y bar. So what we are saying is the information provided by these two samples x and y they are going to be same if I can write them through this transformation provided x bar is equals to y bar. In a way, I mean, we, we also get to know this sense, right? Earlier we know that x bar and y bar, they are trying to essentially capture information about mu, but if they are same, that means they have captured the same amount of information about the parameter mu. Now, the thing is, we have this likelihood functions, which is now functions of my parameter theta. Now, my goal is to identify the best theta there which explains my observed samples okay so x is what i have observed x is observed now i have this l theta x and now what i can do is try to find a theta which maximizes this likelihood function and that is what I am going to call it as theta hat x and I am calling it as a function of x because if you are going to change your x this theta hat x is going to change and this theta hat x that maximizes your likelihood function over all your parameters theta is called maximum likelihood estimator of your parameter theta the unknown parameter theta at the point x okay so notice that now this theta hat x i am calling it as is an estimator so earlier also we had an estimators right we talked about sample mean as an estimator sample variance as estimator for mean sorry variance and all but now given a parameter given a sample x and you are interested in understanding how this you are interested in estimating this parameter theta now i'm obtaining it by maximizing this likelihood function which i'm calling it as theta hat and now this MLE we are going to call it as a okay we are going to call it as a point estimator but before that this MLE is the parameter point for which observed parameter is most likely. So whatever theta hat you are going to get what we are going to say this is the parameter that most likely that has generated your samples when you consider that parameterized probability density function right so what you did you have this underlying theta hat we didn't know about this theta and from this sample x is observed now what i got is we got a theta hat x now we are we are just saying that this theta hat one is the closest approximation of this theta so the pdf whatever the parameter is associated with is exactly now we are believing this is that parameter based on the observed x so in general 
this MLE is a good point estimator and uh, this is one of the most uh, popular estimators that you are going to see. Okay. So, to find a maximum likelihood estimator, first you need to appropriately define your likelihood function and then optimize it using this criteria. Now, there is an optimization here. You have a defined a function and there is an optimization here for your parameter space. Now, the first question is whenever I try to optimize a function whether whatever I am getting is a global optima or not. Okay. Now, I need to have a mechanism to check whether my solution obtained is global optima or not. Now, how you are going to obtain this solution? The standard technique you know is you differentiate your likelihood function assuming that assume for time being that this function is differentiable in your components theta i and then you are going to equate them to 0 for each of this i equals to 1 to k and then when you solve them let us say by doing this you get k equations and solving those k equations you get the k components of your parameter theta like uh, this is uh, theta 1, theta 2 or like this theta q. Now, notice that as I said this theta we are trying to find and this theta hat we get this is going to be a function of your samples. Let us say you observed initially one random sample let us call that x 1 and you got theta 1 x 1 and uh, you had got an another sample and for that you got theta 2 x 2. This, this two are necessarily same. Let us assume that x 1 is not same as x 2. If x 1 is not same as x 2, do you expect theta 1 of x 1 and theta, theta hat of x 2 to be the same? Not necessarily. If there is a small change in sample data, you are estimator can also change. So, it is going to be sensitive to your sample, but then the question is uh, how sensitive is is the solution to the small changes in the sample data. Okay. So, to understand that let us start calculating this uh, maximum likelihood estimator using some samples itself. Uh, uh, like uh, samples from some particular distributions itself. Let us take normal functions, normal distribution where theta is its mean value and its variance is going to be 1. So, I have deliberately put the variance equals to 1 because now this is fixed the only unknown quantity here is the mean value. Now, how you are going to write the likelihood function? Likelihood function is simply going to be the product of the PDF computed at each of these sample points. So, everybody agree with this likelihood function here? So, notice that uh, sigma square is set to 1 in this. Okay? Now, let us try to find out, let us try to, yeah, that is right. There is a minus here. Now, I want to maximize this to find an estimator at point arg max of L theta given x. So, to do that, first I am going to differentiate it. There is only one parameter here, theta one dimensional parameter. So, I am just going to differentiate this with respect to the parameter theta. So, if I differentiate it, I am going to get this condition. Everybody agree with this? Okay. So, one way to write this is another way to write this is 1 upon square root of 2 pi to the power n exponential minus 
x i theta whole square by 2 right now the only way part where theta is coming is in the exponent this is a constant so it is as good as just focusing on this part and differentiating this everybody agree so if i am going to differentiate this part this is going to be 2 times x i minus theta by 2 into minus 1 but uh, that uh, 2 is a constant so i will get simply this condition everybody agree now if i simplify this theta x theta hat x what is the solution i am going to get i am going to get summation of xi by n okay now let's say summation xi by n i got it as theta hat of x but now is this the global optimal is this the global optima or is this globally optimal how to check that how do you check whether the solution from the first order start condition is globally optimum yeah you check for the second order condition and it so happens that in this case when you check this value at this quantity x bar the second order derivative is negative so indeed this quantity b it is going to be global optima in this case now we have this seen this quantity many times right what is this quantity it's a sample mean okay so what we are saying is we are actually saying likelihood estimator is saying that sample estimators sorry sample uh, mean that we have seen seen many times is actually a good estimator for estimating this parameter theta which happens to be the mean of this distribution in this case so we know that theta is the mean of the gaussian random variable right we know already that sample mean we call this quantity as a sample mean and took it as an estimator for mean now likelihood estimator is saying that okay if you are interested in estimating this parameter theta simply take the sample mean so sample mean is the best estimator for estimating the parameter theta here which is the mean of my distribution so anybody has any question in this the way you are computing our sample mean or how you are computing the so this is my maximum likelihood estimator what i'm calling is a mle which is the sample mean okay now let's look into another example let's say you have n samples which are iid drawn from bernoulli with parameter p now first thing i will do is i will write the likelihood function for this the likelihood function for this is going to be simply this one everybody agree we have done this exercise before also right for example if xi equals to 1 this quantity is simply going to be p and if xi equals to 0 this quantity is going to be 1 minus p now this could be written in this format the product become summation in the exponent now okay now let's try to optimize this with respect to my parameter which is p here i think i should have written p here okay can somebody quickly differentiate this function and see what is the p hat function i'm going to get p hat of x is what is it uh, easy to differentiate this with respect to p okay let's differentiate it you are going to get something p summation i equals to 1 to n xi i'm going to hold it n minus summation i equals to 1 to n xi and uh, so this is going to be summation xi and p summation xi minus 1 something like this you get i hold this term as a constant and trying to differentiate the first term so what is the differentiation of x to the power a
is it uh, a x a minus one? So then, yeah, this is what I have done. And now similarly differentiate the other term, p summation x i, and then n minus. Okay. Uh, one minus p n summation x i n summation x i and then n sum sorry one minus p n choose summation x i minus one. So I'm deliberately trying to do this because there is a simpler, much simpler way of doing this then all this complication derivations we have to do okay but but uh, you see that like uh, i mean there is a little bit differentiations i have to do but if i do couple of steps i will be able to do this and uh, you will see that the theta the p hat that maximizes this is again given by summation of xi by n okay this just simple calculations you can verify Okay, now you can check that that same solution x i by r is also actually makes your second order derivative negative that means this is a going to be the optimal point. Okay, you see that like once I have this log likely function I just need to follow these steps of uh, differentiation and get this value. Okay, now there is something called log likelihood function which will help us simplify our life when we are faced with such functions. So what it says, often it is easier to work with log of your likelihood function than with the likelihood function itself. Okay, and since log is the monotone function, the solution to the maximization problem does not change. So suppose let us say I am going to find an arc max of some log function and again I am going to find arc max of log of L theta by x. Does this value optimal values change? Because log is a monotone and I am maximizing this it does not change. Okay, Now let us see how does the log help. So you have this function here initially when you computed for the Gaussian. If I look apply the log function here, you will see that this will become simply this. And now it becomes easier to optimize this right because the first part is constant does not belong to does not depend on theta only the part depends on this this is already simply linear in theta. And if you can optimize this sorry this is quadratic in theta and you can easily optimize this. And similarly, the for the Bernoulli case, we had this complicated function. So this should be Bernoulli. If you take the log function, this again simplifies in this format. And now this is like a constant for a given x. Only thing is log p is there and log 1 minus p. And this is lot easier to differentiate and compute it. Okay. So that is why often instead of dealing with the likelihood functions, we deal with the log likelihood function that will make our fun calculations easier.